Hi guys, welcome to another Kick In with Karan episode. Today we've got Jason, uh, who's going to talk to us about the Oracle Startups program. Hey Jason, welcome to the show. Uh, you know, social distancing here. Uh, you know your room to my room. Um, uh, so, you know, thank you for taking the time and joining us. Uh, you know, just for my audience, uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, sure. what you do, where you come from. Yeah, and, man. Thanks uh, for having me on. I love your show and it's really cool to be a part of it. So even with the social distance, which I think for us right now, it's like three, 4,000 miles or something like that. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, my name's Jason and, and I look after the startup program here at Oracle. Um, it's, it's it's actually been a really cool and interesting three-year journey uh, from what we've done. And we'll, we'll dig into it a little bit more, uh, I assume, as we talk, but we've gone from a program that was reaching just a, a handful of startups um, every year to thousands really all around the globe. And so it's just a, been a real joy to engage with builders and creators who are doing amazing things on, on OCI, really, um, in every walk of life and every sector from um, all over the world. I've been here for about three years and have worked at, in, both in academia, in fact, I'm representing right now, um, and uh, at some other cloud providers. I've also been a startup guy myself, so that, you'll see that's a part of our team. Everybody on, on the leadership team has either been a founder, or uh, like myself, or worked at a startup. So we are really a startup within <laughs> Oracle, which is really a big part of um, our ethos. Oh, awesome. Yeah. And I think, and I think, you know, uh, you know, w since I, I've actually been here three years as well. And, you know, since I've been here, you know, I, I, I felt like every time I got sort of a hint of what Larry was doing, he yeah. always used to talk about startups and it's almost like his pet passion or like, you know, his, uh, he, he dedicates like a portion of his, his time yeah. and his energy to startups and making sure that he has, sure. has that pulse. Right. So what can you talk about in terms of like Larry's involvement? And, you know, I heard about the cancer research stuff and a bunch of different things going on. Yeah, no, this is something Larry is super interested in. I mean, we get a chance to uh, spend a, a lot of time with him, actually updating him on what we've been doing. And, and a lot of his fingerprints are on this with influencing how we've thought about and work with, with startups. So, um, you know, Larry really loves the idea of, of builders and you know we joke around here like he's the og startup guy you know and so in fact um unfortunately covid's going to prevent that from this this year but every once a year we will take a handful of startups and, and go to his house in san francisco and just do like a fireside chat and literally listen to him just riff on what it's like uh being a startup um when when he started oracle and then uh you usually go on some cool tangent on ai and and maybe what the future holds but Kind of all around this idea that that you know builders are really uh, going to drive the next revolution in medicine and government and healthcare and and really everything. So from a Larry's perspective, I, you know he I don't I think he has a very um, you know the future and what is going to happen in the future is tightly integrated with the with the innovator, and so that's why he's been so integral and really involved in, in this. I mean, we, we sit in, in his office from an organization perspective, so we, we report up to the founder. And so that's been really important for us and, and kind of getting our job done here at Oracle. Yeah, and you know, one thing, sort of one commonality that I've seen is, you know, uh, you know my team's uh, worked yeah. with your team extensively, in fact, on some startups, uh, you know, that I was very impressed by, like Ellen Biotech as an example. Uh, but but the one theme that I've kind of seen across the board is that most of the stuff that Larry's kind of interested in is like healthcare and sort of like wellness and sort of like, you know, innovating in that life sciences space. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm guessing that's that's kind of leads into my other question of, you know, we have a set of type of startups that we have in, in the bucket today. You know, when you look at other companies like, you know, Google, Azure, you know, all these other uh, big players, they all have startup communities and they all have startup programs. Oracle, like yeah. why Oracle? Like why Oracle in the sense of like, if I'm a startup today, I look at Oracle and I see database, sure. or, you know, now in the sense cloud. And I look at Google, like cool, like AI right. stuff. Yeah. Like why Oracle? Um, I, I think 
that, that we actually have an unfair advantage over Google and um, AWS and, and Azure to, to some extent where um, to answer that why question. I think there's two buckets of why. Um, the first bucket is, um, and this, both of these are a part of kind of our mission out there to engage startups is to tell people our story. And I mean, the, you know this better than anybody. The fact of the matter is, is that we're, we are, uh, you know, more powerful and better economically than so many of the other options out there. And, and part of it is in the startup community, um, just because of the nature of, of kind of when other cloud providers came on the scene, they just don't know. They just don't know that we have that. You know, so, I mean, you know that. The startups we work with is like the GPUs. They're like, oh, my gosh, I could do so much more on an Oracle GPU for a fraction of the cost. I'm getting killed on, you know, this other provider. Of course, I'm going to come do that here. So there is the kind of table stakes of being able to do a ton of compute for not a lot of money. And so part of a part of the attraction, and, and we're dispelling a myth that there's only one inexpensive cloud. That's a myth. And so we're, we spend a lot of time communicating that and doing that. So that's a, that is a why. You know, people are like, I got a lot of compute and I don't have to spend a lot of money. That's that's compelling. Um, the second thing, which I think is the unfair advantage, is um, the relationships that we have with the enterprise community. So you talked about health. You talked about um, you know improving the human condition generally. And so a lot of startups, you know, they've got some really cool ideas. And yeah, they can scale it. They can do it a little bit of, of, of cost. But how are they going to amplify their story? How are they going to get to people that can give them revenue? You know. It, it, it is, is Google going to be able to do that? Is AWS going to be able to do that? And I, and I think the unfair advantage that we have is the, you know a 40 plus year intimate relationship with the enterprise. We've got 430,000 customers running super significant workloads. And so what we've noticed is that a lot of startups are coming to us saying, man, if we could do interesting things on, things on the cloud and collaborate with you, it perhaps will open up opportunities for us. And that that is the truth. That is the answer. Yeah, so I guess in that's in that case, right? Like we're almost very similar to Microsoft because our customer base is there, right? Uh, we're very similar underpinning customer base, true enterprise customers. But also, I feel like you know, I think you know, Oracle's selling power in our field and our ability to amplify exactly. products. I think so it's, I know, think it's that amplification and access, and so. I'm one to talk about the goodness of our stuff and, and let that spit stand for itself. But if I can put a pause on that for a second and address Microsoft, like I think you're totally right. We have very similar customers, but the kind of workloads that Microsoft runs and the kind of workloads at Oracle aren't the same. You know, major banks aren't settling their stock trading systems on, you know, pick a database from a competitor, right? It is, it's on, right? It's not, so, so what that, the implication of that though is, is that, the access to the kinds of people running the kinds of workloads that our startups want to do, right? If you're a B2B play or something like that, you're not looking for like the desktop procurement guy, you know? And so, you know, and, and not right. to disparage that, like there's, there are great products out there to do that, but I think that's why we even have another level of relationship. And so right. um, we like to call it a shared responsibility model from a perspective of delivery is, you know, Hey, startups, if you, if, if you, my responsibility is to show you the goodness of OCI and what you can do. Your responsibility is to use that and use it well and understand our customer base. If we can do that together, then it does open up a lot of really cool doors within our customer base. Because the enterprises often are coming to us saying, man, startups are killing us. They're more agile. Oracle, how can you help us? How can you innovate with us? And, you know, there's, there's, we have great products, but we don't make everything. All right. Well, thanks, Jason. We'll continue this conversation in another episode. Uh, check in maybe next week. Let's do it. <laughs>